Okay, so we're back. This is the final video looking at kind of uh, Virginia Woolf's uh, piece today, um, A Room of One's Own. Um, it is, it raises bigger issues, larger sort of cultural issues about who gets to write and why. Um, and the thing I think really worth considering is, is it's, uh, it, it, has, it, has a, it has bigger ramifications. Who gets hired to direct a movie? Um, who gets who who has the free time to write a novel? Because if you the free time often means money. Um, you often need money to see if you're going to work on a novel. You know it could take you years to write. Um, so who has the money to spend years writing? Who has the money to go to an MFA program? Um, who has the money to go to the best MFA programs? Who has the time? Um, and the answer is it tends to be sort of upper class white dudes because um, they tend to have more inherited money than other groups of people, uh, which makes a lot of sense because if your ancestors were sort of slaves uh, in this country, uh, then you don't have as much inherited wealth as people who came from other backgrounds. Um, and so, and, and, and women, uh, there's all kinds of social pressure on women to follow into other areas. Um, so it, it raises an issue of, and who gets to do these things? And also like, how are people treated? So like, you think about male directors and male actors and male writers and who flip out and scream at people. Um, and they're like, oh, he's just a temperamental genius. You know, that's, that's how Christian Bale, he, he screams at people. But, you know, he's a genius. And he just, he's just, you know, he's, he's so intense. Um, where these stories, you know, all these stories about these men who treat the artist men who treat people badly. Um, and then you switch over for a second and be like, well, wait a minute, what if this was a woman? And people wouldn't think they were an interesting, complicated, tortured artist. They would just go, she's a bitch. Um, you see this all over the place. Um, just for starters, women, female, uh, professors who are women, uh, their student evaluations are lower than professors who are men. Uh, because students, when I command my students to do things, um, they see it as, you know, masculine or whatever, and they don't have any problem with it. But if a woman talks to them in the exact same tone of voice that I talk to my students, they go, oh, she's a bitch. Um, they, tend to, they tend to make comments about sort of female professors uh, that are very different. They, they, they care about, like, is the person good looking or not? Suddenly, but, you know, filters into the evaluations in a way that it doesn't for me. Um, so the issue, the issue raised here um, is something you, it's something that is very easy to completely forget about. It's something that you can keep out of your mind. You can just say, well, I'm just going to read these authors, and these are my favorite authors, and that's it. But the bigger question of why these authors were allowed to support it in their creating of stories rather than this other group of artists over here who could have been but weren't, because um, when you sit down to think about literature, you tend to think about the literature that exists. Of course you do. Um, and you don't tend to have a lot of time to think about the literature that doesn't exist, but could have if other people had been given support, if other people had been given the time and energy and space of other people's ideas or interests were taken seriously. Um, uh, there was a, years ago, um, the comp book, comp book conventions were, you know, big thing. Um, and for many, many years, comic books were treated as, um, uh, it was like a boys club because it was just a thing that like boys did. Um, and there was a big problem created around the Comic-Con years ago when Twilight got big because Twilight was a huge hit. Um, and people, women suddenly showed up at the comic book convention uh, and they were not treated well by the men who felt like, you know, the comp, this, this is a comic book convention. It's a boys club. It's for fantasy comic book nerds. are supposed to be men. And all of a sudden these women kind of entered into the thing and everybody started shitting all over Twilight and talking about how it was the worst. It was the stupidest thing. Um, and obviously Twilight has its problems, but so does most of the superhero boy stuff that the boys were into. Um, and the issue was, why were people so upset about Twilight? Well, some of it had to do with Twilight having some problems in the writing. It's not, you know, the best written book in the world. But neither was the fantasy authors that the male, the, the, the men were obsessed with. Um, but it got extra bullshit because they were just like, it's, it's for women and girly stuff is stupid. Um, as if, you know, there, there's something... Uh, inherently stupid about a woman trying to decide who she's going to marry, which is the, the sort of plot line of the of Twilight versus you know some superhero just you know guy dresses like a bat in his underwear and punches people in the dark. I don't know, you know, I, is one of those a more worthy storytelling? Um, but people piled onto Twilight and hated it, and a lot of it had to do with the fact that it's 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 for women. Um, it was sort of primarily targeted at women, um, and so the issue with these stories is who. You always have to ask yourself who is supported, who has the time, who has the space 
to make these kinds of things, which raises issues that we don't like to think about because we tend to think of genius as being something you're born and you just get it out of your head and boom, you're a genius. But actually, it's not about one person and their magical soul powers that come out on the page. It's about the support that they get from society. And so if your society isn't supporting people to be artists, then you're only going to get a certain kind of art which focuses on a certain kind of subject. Um, and it's why you tend to get a huge number of television shows and movies focused on, like, you know, young men. Um uh, over and over again. Why? Because they're being made by young men. Uh, and so they have, they, they, they deal with these same kind of issues. Um, it's by the way, really fascinating to me why you end up with so much say science fiction stuff like star Wars and whatnot. Um, that very much becomes about legacy and hereditary, uh, hereditary stuff. So like the more, more recent star Wars films, uh, are very much, it's interesting to me that they're, they're about legacy um, about who your ancestors are. It really matters in these fantasy science fiction stories who your parents were. Um, so in the most recent story, in the most recent Star Wars story, um, Rey's sort of uh, lineage, who was her parents, who were her father, who was, her, you know, where did she come from, is extremely important because it turns out that she's part of a larger nobility. Uh, she comes, she has like a special noble line of whatever. Well, isn't that interesting? Because the guy that directed the movie, his name is J.J. Abrams, and his parents are super rich Hollywood people. So of course he would be really supportive of a story about how it really matters where you come from. Uh, because he's ended up made, he's made a story that mirrors his own life in some ways. And in fact, J.J. Abrams' kid, who's like way too young, has just been put in charge of a lot of nonsense at Marvel Comics because he's related to J.J. Abrams. Um, and so it's interesting that he makes a story about lineage and destiny and, and, and because in his life, he got the job he got because of his sort of family ties and family connections, not because of any inborn genius. And so uh, in the Star Wars stories, it's not about sort of, are you the strongest? Are you the best swordsman? It's where did you come from? Uh, and so it's mirroring some of the issues in, in J.J. Abrams' own life. Um, this has this kind of thinking about who gets to tell stories and who is supported and what kind of society do you want to live in and how are you going to support people so that they can do what they want to do? Because otherwise you end up supporting this group over here and starving this group over here. Um, and it, it honestly it creates repetitive stories. You end up with a lot of literature that looks exactly the same when you only support kind of, you know, young white dudes in Brooklyn writing novels and you completely ignore. And we're getting better. We're getting better at this, right? We have, we, we certainly have more women behind the camera directing movies and we certainly have more, you know, uh, move, superhero movies with female leads. Um, I mean, there's some, obviously there are some things that are improving, um, but this larger question, if you, you have to never lose sight of this thing. And it, it's privilege, right? This is, this is the term that we used to talk about. This is who has privilege and who doesn't. And so you don't really want to lose sight of the fact that, that the certain people are supported in making this because you want to also try to live in a society where you can support lots of people being able to make lots of different kinds of stories. Otherwise, your stories are going to get really, really boring really fast if they're only coming from the same group of people. Uh, and it's why you, it's why a lot of Hollywood gets pretty repetitive after a while. You end up seeing the same goddamn movie again and again because it's being made by the same type of people because those are the people that are getting the support. Um, so uh, Virginia Woolf's piece is a, is a, is a big one um, uh, because it, it, it really has to do with the social that, – that to be an author requires social conditions to be a certain way. So you need a room. You need time. You need space to just think and get your ideas on the page. And if we're only giving that to some members of the population, that's going to affect art. Um, it's, we love to tell stories about how, like Ratatouille, for example, is like, if you're born a genius, somehow you'll get through the system and people will know you're a great cook, even if you were born a rat. And that does happen sometimes, right? Certainly you, you have all these stories about individuals who are born in unfortunate circumstances who became great artists. Um, but those are, those are individual, real rare individual examples. The larger thing we should be doing is supporting people to make art, um, 
from all different walks of life and all different backgrounds and types of experience because otherwise you, you because it, it is often very difficult and a lot of people we, you know ratatouille tells a story but there's one rat that never gave up but truthfully a, a lot of people will give up if you put enough obstacles in front of them and it's cute that the rat never gave up and became a great chef in ratatouille um, but wouldn't it have been easier if he had had less obstacles toward being a great chef um and so what we need to do is figure out a way to get those obstacles down and try to reduce them as much as possible and support artists and support art so okay that's the end of this Thank you for joining me for Virginia Wolf, and I would love for you guys to think about some examples and to put some some thoughts on this into the comments. So, uh, all right, thank you.